everyone. In this video, I'd like to think about your greyhound's weight. I've certainly come across people myself who have been told that their dog is skinny, but I think we can get a little bit confused about what our dog should look like when they're a good weight, because with a greyhound, you can see their shape with their thin fur and low body fat. If you have a fluffy sort of dog, they can look a lot more chunky or cuddly than a dog with a short coat. So we can be a little bit misled into how the dog should look. Now a study by the Royal Veterinary College in 2021 showed that one in 14 dogs as pets are overweight. They suggested that neutering dogs and being in middle age may be factors with this because both of those tend to lead to weight gain. Neutering can increase the dog's appetite and also reduce their activity, which of course allows them to put on weight unless their food is cut back. Being overweight is really not good for dogs any more than it can be for people. It can lead to a shorter lifespan. It can lead to a reduced quality of life and it can contribute towards... Gandalf, what are you doing down there? Come out. It can contribute towards problems in certain disorders or conditions such as arthritis. So if your dog is carrying extra weight, it's going to make arthritis in their joints more painful because the joints have that pressure from the extra weight. If they have an old racing injury, again, that could be made worse by carrying additional weight. It can also lead to breathing problems, to heart problems, more likelihood of getting diabetes, and it can contribute to certain cancers. So it makes a lot of sense to keep your dog at a healthy weight so they can enjoy their retirement to the full. Greyhounds naturally have low body fat and more muscle, partly because of their natural physiology and partly because of their athletic career. And people often comment when they, comment when they first take a dog home how muscly and firm their body is because they still have that muscle from racing. Like many athletes, they're going to be slim and toned. And as they settle into home life, they may gain weight at least a little bit because their racing weight is likely to be a bit lower than what we call their pet weight. So I would expect them to put on a bit of weight, but we don't necessarily want them to put on a lot. Now it's easy to check your dog's weight at home without needing to go somewhere with some scales or try to stand on your bathroom scales balancing a dog in your arms. Let's take a look at how we might do that just by assessing their body condition. So it's very easy to check the body condition of your greyhound at home just by looking at them. And I've chosen Jim for this because he shows off hopefully what is about a right weight for this dog. So we're going to look first of all at the rib cage. You ought to see the outline of the ribs. You should definitely be able to feel the ribs and these last three should be clear. So even if these are not too clear, these last three should be clear to you. You also want to look at the pin bones on his hips. You should be able to feel these. Depending on how muscly they are, these may stick up or they may be indented slightly, but you should be able to feel them. We also want to look at how tucked up he is into his tummy. So coming up here towards his waist, how lifted up this is. And when we look from above, we want to see that there is a distinct narrowing of his waist. So you have the width of the rib cage narrowing in at the waist and then broadening out again to the hips. Thank you, Jimmy, that's very brave of you. Now, if your dog is underweight, you're gonna see more ribs, you're gonna see more spine, you're gonna see more pelvis. They're also likely to have a very thin neck. If your dog is overweight, the ribs will be more covered and you're less likely to be able to feel them or even see them. This will disappear. Their neck could get a bit too big. And when you look at them from above, they may go straight down. There's less of a waist. They're less drawn up or tucked up underneath. If your dog is obese and you look at them from above, then they just go straight down like a sausage and they develop kind of rolls here so they get this square shape. Sorry Jimmy. And so when this curviness around the waist starts to go, your dog definitely needs to think about losing some weight. 
So it makes sense to check your dog's weight regularly, at least every few weeks, but quite often you may not need to make a special time to do it because you can tell every time you look at them. If the dog is under or overweight, I would adjust their food by 20, 25% either up or down. You could um, increase their weight by adding small quantities of high calorie food. So you don't necessarily want to bulk it out because you're going to just end up with more poop coming out the other end, but small amounts of fattening things like cheese or sardines or pasta will help them to put on weight. Remember when you're adjusting their food to consider the treats they have as well as the main meals because the treats can be quite fattening in themselves and of course fattening in a small quantity. If you need to reduce their weight, offer smaller portions rather than taking something out altogether because the chances are they know how many biscuits or how many times a day they get those things. Jimmy here certainly has a very good idea of what food arrives when and it didn't take him long to figure that out. So you might change to using lower calorie versions of things. You might use a smaller size. So a good trick, for example, if they have a dentist stick would be to give them a smaller dentist stick or half a dentist stick, or give them smaller amounts of the higher calorie foods that you add to their normal food. You could also consider a kibble that is aimed at weight loss, a ready prepared one that has lower fat and other things in it that are going to make them plumper. So there are things you can do with their diet that don't take a lot of effect in that they cause the dog to feel really hungry, but they are going to over a few weeks help to change them. And I would find that if I change their food by about 25%, I would expect to see a change in their body condition within a couple of weeks. So if you're not seeing that change, ask yourself, is something going wrong? Maybe someone else in the family is giving them little sneaky snacks, or perhaps you need to cut their food a little bit more if you're trying to lose weight or add a little bit more if you're trying to gain weight. But that's slow and steady is a good way to proceed with it in my experience. So I hope you found that helpful. We'll be back again soon with more videos for you. Bye for now. Look out for new videos every Monday and why not subscribe so you don't miss out.